Hello and welcome back. I'm Random Gamer Riven, and once again I'll be taking you through another mission on Destiny. Okay, so today's mission is, of course, the Shrine of Oryx, as you can see there. This is probably one of the harder missions on the moon, and it's certainly one of the more fun missions. I've also learned it off by heart thanks to when this was in the Queen's Campaign missions, which we still haven't seen a repeat of. They were released in September. It's now January, and we've still not seen another Queen mission. This is probably one of the longest missions on the moon. In fact, it's even longer than the strike. At least in terms of uh, the amount of distance you have to travel. Because you have to go much deeper into the hell map than any other mission in the game. Possibly only the new Crota mission actually goes a bit deeper. But it's certainly one of the more trickier ones. Fortunately, as you'll soon discover, there is a raging battle. But here, through the course of this mission, as the Hive are actually battling the Fallen. So this certainly makes it for a more interesting mission than normal. Actually, if you're story-wise, this is probably meant to have taken place after the raid, because it makes chronological sense that the raid, you, the players have gone on, killed Crota, and that the last act in the battle for the moon was effectively severing the link to Aura, who is, of course, Crota's father. Aura is probably pretty annoyed with the fact that the players have killed off his son. So here we go. First off, as you can see, the game, this mission plants you straight off in front of the entrance of the hell mass, which is a quick running. No using your sparrow to zoom over there, which is a, a blessing in disguise, as too often not a few of the missions dump you so far back, you just have to run through to... I should sort of give you the scenic route through some of the mission. So again, we're going back through the area we covered in the last mission, the Sword of Crows. In fact, we even visit the same ruin. I'm picking up fallen activity. Heavier than normal. Something's got them worked up. I'll stay on it. So, as you'll see there, you, your little ghost prompts you that there's a lot more uh, activity than normal from the fallen. And as soon as you go into the gatehouse, you will see why. There is fallen engaging oh. in hide. Now, if you want to be a bit cheeky and you don't actually do much shooting, you can actually sit back and let the hide and fallen shoot at one another till one fraction's been wiped out. It works quite well if you're a low level because it means you only have really weakened troops to pick off. But it depends on strategy. If you want the XP, then you're going to have to go in there and fight them both. And by the way, the way the AI works, that as soon as you start shooting one of them, they will both attack you. They won't carry on engaging each other. They will just all turn to attack you. So as soon as you run out of sight, they will then start attacking one another. Slightly weird little trick with the AI there, but it's, it's a bit of a flummox, it's how it works, rather than engaging the threat, they just engage the player as soon as they see it, so it, it kind of kills the whole factor that the uh, fractions are battling one another, as soon as the AI sees you, it's just all go for the player. So straight up, this is just a simple stay behind cover and finish them off one by one. You have got a servitor, as you can see there, that's probably the most menacing enemy. There aren't too many hives at this point, do be slightly careful of the ship. I don't think it shoots you, but it does drop off a few reinforcements. And again, there's a vandal with a sniper rifle at the back, so stay behind cover till you can deal with him. Yeah, this is also the only mission that actually has a ghost that you have to pick up on it on this mission alone because you can't access it during patrol. This is it's the only mission on the moon that has a unique ghost, but if you want to get it, you will have to do this mission. And if you don't pick up the ghost, you'll have to repeat this mission to get it. So as always, the basic enemies tend to hide behind a lot of rock. Now, as you enter the next room here, it's tempting to run through straight down, and you can do that, but I always advise clearing the way first. You can see here, a couple of shanks come out of that doorway, and there's a few sniper vandals. And often, a few times I've tried to run in, run down, straight through, I've been caught by one of the shanks or the sniper vandal before I get down into the passageway in the next room below. This mission is also actually quite a good one for bounties, as there's two 
unique assassination bounties in this mission as well. One for the fallen general that you will see in a moment, and one for Shardok, who is the Eye of Aurox, who appears at the very end of the mission. So once you've cleared out enough of the enemies, I mean, I think, I can't remember, I think I just went for a dash down. I'm not, it's not worth really finishing off the other enemies unless you want the yeah, yeah, straight down. I mean, you, you don't need to worry about the remaining ones battling out and that are in no mentioning. Now, I think you can actually skip this character, the Baron. There's nothing that's blocking the door at this point, but he is an assassination target and you do get a little mini mission bit here. They don't crawl out of their skiffs too told you there's a Baron and you've got to hide him. Now, he's always at the back here. He does carry quite a nasty gun and he does have some stealth vandals with him who will try and sneak up and assassinate you from behind and I went for the full-on approach there which doesn't tend to work too well as I, as you've seen me attempt past so I'm going to try a more cautious approach this time round by dealing with all his troops first he is a major this baron and he is shielded as well so be aware of that so if you've got an arc gun handy it comes in very handy for taking down his arc shield as you can see there I don't have any arc weapon so I'm forced to shoot through his shield although I believe I actually have an arc grenade at this point so Correct name Frigorous is Elite Exile. I think it's Exile Baron. Basically, just keep going at shields and just keep keep at him. He he is quite an evasive character. This one, he does tend to try and hide away from you as soon as he takes a bit of damage to let shield region. So you do want to keep up the pressure. Else, this can turn to quite a long and laborious battle. No, see there, finally got a shield down, you just keep going for him. As long as you keep, keep maintaining damage, their shield won't regen. As soon as you give them a break, and your gunfire, their shield will start regen. See there, it's getting a bit touchy with his shield. About to regen, so I just managed to get it in time before he did. I think it's about 5-6 seconds before they start to regen. So now I have taken too long to get at him and the shield will have fully regen at this point. So yeah, yeah, I did actually have Fist of Havoc, which is uh, an arc attack, so I used that to finish him off, which made it nice and simple. These tunnels go on for miles. We'll never explore them all. So once again we're running down this section, you'll notice this section again because this is the same one as I mentioned you'll be doing in the strike as well. This part of the mission is exactly the same as the strike, the only difference in the strike when you get to the room where the Sword of Crota was, there's a three way delay while your ghost opens the locked door, but for some reason the main door has now become locked despite it being unlocked earlier. Whereas this one we actually have to go back into the world's grave and then into the Shrine of Auric itself as a separate location. Okay. Now this is the main causeway area you may remember we're from the world's grave as well. This is the area where we had to assassinate that knight and this, this area is basically the main junction point. There are three exits off it that take you up to the Hellmouth, the world's grave and the Temple of Crow to exit via, via this room. This is basically the junctioning room. It also enables you to go deeper into the various other rooms. So. So you will be in this area an awful lot. It does get a bit repetitive. I, I had wished the hell map was a bit bigger because it does feel like you're just running the same ground. I mean, it's nice it's all interlinked, but often 
the campaign missions are designed so that you're actually taking the longest route through. Like this one, we could have actually, the start of it, we could have gone through the world's grave entrance and we would have already been down to the last half of the mission. But of course the ghost doesn't want you to go via the world grave entrance, he wants you to go via the hellmouth entrance. And here we are, the reverse side of the world's grave. Or well, the Hall of Wisdom, to be exact, is the location name, but the World Graves myth is the starting bit you enter via. So I said, let the enemies find out. Now, do be a bit careful, because this is the first bit I always find a bit of grief with that Hollowed Knight. You have got the dregs shooting you, and as soon as you start drawing their attention, they will start attacking you. I generally let the dregs try and shoot down the knight and his acolyte. They don't tend to kill the knight, but you want them to try and weaken him. Now, I've got to be very particular now, as there's a lot of enemies that suddenly crop out of nowhere to try should. Well, that's, that's another advantage with that arc grenade. As you can see, the, the, the enemies do tend to run away from it, and, and in a few cases the AI does decide to run off clear. So there. So basically, it's the old Atheon glitch, except this time they're actually running off the cliff themselves. So as you approach here, you'll notice that's why I got the sniper out. There'll be two dregs on both sides will suddenly run down to try and attack you. There's two on the left and two on the right side as well. And as you see, they're being shot by the two on the right side. Just take your time dealing with these drag, and what you want to do, you have to carefully head up into the centre area now because, again, you've got more dregs and another knight and some acolytes fighting it out. So there's the knight, the acolyte, fist of havoc to try and deal with as many as possible, and there's the drag just running the centre as well. Usually, I find when you start attacking the knight, he tends to run into the back room area where the rest of his allies are. See there, the acolytes are fighting that ruin. So I finish with the last of the dregs and then we're going to head up into this offshoot room here. We, now this is the way into the Shrine of Aurek. Now usually, and the reason why you can only, you need to do this mission for the ghost is because the door, as you see there straight ahead of us there's a door. That door is usually locked on patrol. It's only open on this mission. So there's that knight who, as you can see, he ran backwards. Now there's another sword knight tucked away here, and there's a wizard at the back of this room. So you have to be careful of this room, because all the enemies are actually hiding, and as soon as you walk forward, they all suddenly pop out. There's a ton of acolyte, and there's a knight hiding to the left side, and there's a wizard hiding at the back. And the wizard is actually a major. This is not a section you run through quickly. See, there's the wizard who's finally popped up. In fact, I've died an awful lot in the past on this section. You don't realise how well hidden some of the enemies are. Yeah, if you're jumping up to a good way to start blushing, in the out, see their location. So there's one acolyte like behind it. Right in the back now. I'm going to think I'm going to go for the knight now. He's over the left side because he, he remains constantly hidden and then just has a nasty habit sneaking up. Right. Again, I actually managed to get this knight stuck by throwing down my arc grenade. There he is, tucked away there. And there he goes, wandering down the side. And he actually walked in from where he got himself stuck. You can see he's not moved. So I just keep shooting him until he goes down. That was very close. I didn't realise how low my health was at that point. Now, the acolytes at this bit are very, very defensive. They're constantly hiding, so make sure you take them out one by one. Don't go head on, or else the wizard will try and intercept you. More the acolyte.
So my best advice is to l try and flush out all the acolytes before finishing off the wizard. As you know, the wizard certainly likes to try and light up the area with her fireballs. And she just keeps throwing them and throwing them, so you have got to be really careful. This is probably the most annoying wizard I find in the game because its AI seems slightly more defensive than usual. It's always either that or just primarily the terrain because it, there's so much terrain for it to hide around. As soon as you start getting a few shots, it's straight off out, out of your view. And the acolyte are just really annoying because they support it so well. And rock headshot on that. Now I can just flush out the wizard. Actually, a, a little slight trivia note. This is one of the few missions that actually had a bit of a nerf to it. So originally, the next section coming up was full of hive acolyte mages, which Bungie noticed people were farming pretty quickly, and so they removed a load of the mages and just turned them into normal true. Okay, so here we are, the Shrine of Oryx. This is the first section that you can't normally get into if you're doing a patrol or any other mission. The shrine. Find a way through. So there's a shrine, find a way through, and then it'll go. So you could, that's actually the shrine I was shooting at. Now you want to be slightly careful here, as so you've got fallen down below and you've got acolytes up top. Now, once you've cleared off the initial fallen, I recommend going up top to deal with the acolyte. Now, in case you're wondering, here I was actually just checking out some new equipment I picked up because it was getting a bit hairy, so I thought I'd go for some better gear. And it's it's always a good idea to check what you've got. Certainly at the low levels, you're often going to pick up better stuff than what you're currently using, so don't ever feel afraid to equip it in mission. It, it makes your life a bit easier, you may get a better weapon. It's just going to make the mission that bit easier. Always equip it. As soon as you get a level up, check what your gear is. If you've got something better, quickly pop it on. So as you can see there, I'm just sitting back and sniping most of the bad guy from this point. I want to snipe off most of them, just head up and check there's a few left. I mean, always check your radar as well. This is certainly a mission you want to take nice and slowly. It's not a mission you want to rush or else you will go down an awful lot. So once I've cleared off the last of these acolytes, you'll hear a roar and then an ogre will appear and you'll also get a rush of thrall as well. So there's the roar and at any second now you're going to see a rush of thrall coming forward. Yep, there they go. There's a few acolytes that'll come from the back as well. As you see them just running in the background there. But yeah, get try to get a few shots on the ogre then get back. You don't want to be in his line of sight when he starts shooting because the thrall will be rushing you at the same time. So you really want to find a nice position to hide in, shoot down the Thrall first, then you want to go for the Ogar second and polish off the Acolyte's Lar. The Ogar, as you can see, is a Major as well, so you really want a Sniper Rifle to do a lot of damage to him quickly. The Ogar's down, watching on the last of the Acolyte. Now you need to be a little bit 
wary here because you have still got one last rush of thrall left to deal with and there's a knight before you actually get into the main shrine itself. And you're also just about to be, have the opportunity to pick up the ghost as well. So after you've killed, finished off that last acolyte, there's a tendency to relax for a moment as you go through here. Don't, because you're about to get a rush of thrall any second backed up by a knight. So there's all the thrall, and there I put in a fist of panic to try and take out as many as possible. Grenade down as well, and then just finish off the knight. If you stay back here, I think the thrall don't rush all the way forward. In fact, at the minute there's actually one thrall hiding back. And then once you've killed off them and cleared the area, Take a look, look to your right, and Bob's your uncle. There is the ghost. So you want to awaken him, because this is the only time you can get him, so that you won't be getting him on patrol or anything. He's only available in this mission. There's a few other ghosts only available in missions, but they're only on Mars. There was one a few people thought was a mission only on Venus, but that you can actually get to it normally if you've got good enough jump. I should say you can get to it on patrol. That was one in the next strike. There's actually you can jump through a window and get into an area that you can't usually get to. As soon as you come in, you'll see these guys crouching down these acolytes. Just finish them off. There's only six of them. They're nice, easy prey. Now, if you're a high level, there are two strategies here. As what happens as soon as we go to scan strike, you're going to get a wave. We're going to get the boss wave. Now, if you're a high level of a rocket launcher and some decent grenades and a super, you can effectively bombard the doorway as it opens and deal with the boss and all his troops in one go. If you're not a high level like I am, there's a slightly more cowardly tactic of running back to the previous location and snipe him through the wall. You can guess which one I'm going to be doing as I'm a low level. Zardok is actually quite a menacing minion, he does have actually quite a bit of health, so I'm actually going to just put a rocket launcher in to try and deal with as many of the enemies. Now, Sardok does have a few spawning troops by this entrance, so you want to be careful. As soon as the door opens, you'll actually see through it. Actually, there's a slight flash, you see Sardok just before he even appears. It's like, yeah, there he goes, there's a T-start, so she appears in like, oh, it's T-start. It's like he's being placed at this point, but yeah. So, grenade in, rocket, and that deals with most of his troops and does a bit of damage. You want to get all the way back to the entrance way. Now you do want to stand all the way back because the door to your right there is a reinforcement point for a few of the high. There's Sardot, the Eye of Aura, as you see there, it's like hit by some of the reinforcements that come through the door because I wasn't moving far back enough quick. So you, basically this section here where you're standing, the entranceway, is where you want to be for the duration of the fight. It makes it an awful lot easier as you can hide and practically avoid all of Sardoc's shot. So I'm just going to finish out all the Thrall and Acolytes and then I'm going to start snipering at Sardoc. His AI seems to bring him to the wall as well and he looks to get stuck a lot of the time. You can see he's just standing there so I'm going to start sniping him now. And he's still stuck on the wall, just going to carry on sniping him. Now, sometimes he does get a bit more active, as you'll see in a moment. And for the most part, a few shots to the head. Yep, there he's getting more active. Again, just get back, stay behind, snipe. If you don't have a sniper, a scout rifle, even an auto rifle at range, hand cannons, they usually have enough range to damage him, so... You just really want to stay back at your low level, because he is quite a tough opponent. He's running back there and running low on ammo, so I'm gonna have to wait. And I actually swapped to my scout rifle to start shooting. Okay, yeah, he's aiming straight for me, and he will hit you. His gun has quite a bit of splash damage as well, so you've got to be mindful of that because even if it lands near you, you're still gonna take damage because that doesn't hit you, but it lands close enough to actually do damage. You can see there was impacting on the door, but still giving me splash damage. So I just wait till I heal up. Nip back around and start shooting him again. 
Now he does have a tendency to move around. A lot of enemies, their AI moves them out quickly as soon as you get out of range, so they will move around as soon as you leave their field of view. So you have to be aware of that. You see there, he'd wandered off, so you've got to be quick to know where he is and then start getting the shots on him. You also don't want to be suddenly surprised by them because they can sometimes do that, disappear if you approach you from an angle you're not expecting. So there's start up back and there's actually a few troops down below me again. Going. So now all you've got to do is destroy the shrine of Aurochs itself. It. Point. So just grab Sarox's goodies, then point your gun up to the shrine and fire away till it blow. Now I said mission why this does feel like this should have occurred after the raid is just severing the link to Aurochs himself. severed their connection. The shrine now once you finish the mission, me. as with a number of the other story missions, you are uh, given a shroud of brine itself and you can use that to trade in is, with the gunsmith. Although you have to go via your vanguard mentor first. So, mission ends. It's certainly one of the trickier missions on the moon. That's also good practice for the strike as well. So you see there, 131 kills. It actually is one of the longer missions in the game. And there's the... You've got the Firebreaker Type R3 and Shroud of the Sign. So... Once you get back, you want to head straight down to Earth. Or the tower itself. And once again, you want to head over to your Vanguard Mentor. Need some new gear. Who will give you another arms requisition. Quite why they don't just send you straight to the gunsmith. It seems a weird two-part thing, but... Oh well. But anyway, take speech to Vanguard Mentor, head over to the gunsmith, and you'll get to pick a primary Let's weapon. So, take a look at what's on offer, pick what you like, and go with it. Right, that's me, Random Gamer Riffin. Thanks again for watching. Keep watching for more videos very soon.